Hey, we're continuing our talk about bar cutoffs. We've just spent quite a long time talking about the behavior of bars in Bond and the development length, like how far the bar has to be embedded to break before it slips out. And we talked about several uh, applications. So we talked about... Um, How long does that need to be so that <clears throat> the straight bar will not slip out of the cantilever when the cantilever uh, breaks off of the column? We talked about this length here. How long does that hook need to be to develop? Um, we also talked about uh, if you had a column. Uh, <clears throat> In compression, how long does that bar need to be to develop? And the last thing we talked about was if you had a really long beam and your bar couldn't quite go all the way and you had to use two pieces, How long do you have to overlap those bars? How much do you have to overlap them uh, to make that equivalent to one really long piece of steel? We talked about all those things, but uh, <clears throat> ironically, this is a really, really small part of what we're trying to get at. And what we really are motivated to do is talk about bar cutoffs. And let me just try to explain the principle. You learned how to size so you could get B and H a beam, and then you've learned how to pick out how much steel to put the beam in the beam. <clears throat> and what you do, uh, the first step was you found the biggest maximum moment and you size the beam for that. And you've already had a little bit of taste of this in your project that when the moment's smaller, you don't need the same amount of steel. Well, within one beam, uh, the moment changes. You see this moment diagram here? And so there, there is a situation. So here, um, <clears throat> eventually, this, this is what you designed for, and you got those uh, four bars. Oops, I'm blocking the picture. Let me move myself. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> And so, uh, someplace along the way, you could reduce to maybe half, right? Maybe the moment reduces by half. And we saw in that example we did at the very, very start of the semester, it's not exactly proportional, but roughly, uh, if you take out half of the steel, the capacity goes down by half. It's not exact, but um, you could find MU for this, right? You know how to do that. T equals C, solve for A, D is Z minus A over two, and M is T times Z. You can find uh, <clears throat> this reduced strength with only two of the bars. You don't need all four bars eventually, so you can cut some of the bars off, bar cut off. And so when you no longer need all four bars, you could have two bars and it would look something like this. Okay, so I'm going to try and draw that moment diagram on here. So that moment diagram looked like that. You needed all four bars there, but eventually you only needed two bars. And so see out here, there's only two bars. And what we want to know is where can we cut those middle two bars off? And it's quite a bit of work. And you might say, like, why in the world would we want to do this? Um, where this is really important is for negative steel. So you have all these bars on the top. Looks like this. If you could get rid of two of them, okay, all of a sudden it's easier to pour the concrete into the top of the beam. And so we really, really want to be able to cut off some of the steel in the top, if that's possible. Anyway, let's get back to our, our little discussion here. 
So where do we cut the bars? Okay, so again, um, this moment here uh, needed all four bars. This moment here only needs two bars. Okay? So what you're going to have to do, and you're going to have to be good at moment diagrams, is you know, you're going to have to find this distance where the moment's decreased enough where two bars will be strong enough to be phi mn greater than mu. So you're going to get the mn of two bars. Phi mn of two bars will be greater than mu at this spot, x from the support. Okay, so you can see that uh, you're going to have to be uh, pretty handy at calculating distances on moment diagrams. All of you uh, are pretty good at calculating MN now, so I think the hardest part of this will be working with the moment diagrams. Okay, hey. so all you're going to do again is you're going to calculate MN for this with just two bars and find the corresponding spot on the moment diagram. We're going to take phi MN, sorry. And this will be MU and find the corresponding point on the moment diagram in U. Okay. However, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you say where you want to cut it, they might put the bar like too far this way or too far that way. It won't be exactly where you want. Uh, so to be safe, this is theoretically where you want to cut it, you're going to add to be safe an extra margin of error of D, or 12 bar diameters, whichever is greater, but for now, let's just say D. So whatever D is to be safe, you're going to make the bar that much longer. Okay? And so that's theoretically where you're going to cut it, and that's actually, or practically, where you're going to cut it, okay? This has nothing to do with development length, and we just spent several videos talking about development length. Why do we need to know development length? Um, the reason we need to know development length is you're shortening the bars. That distance from where you want to cut the bar to the maximum moment has to be at least the development link otherwise the bar will split out okay um, so what what we're saying is when you make this beam like this and i'm going to exaggerate let's say we cut the bar really short like that when this beam cracks in the middle that bar is not going to be long enough on both sides of that crack to hold the two halves together and the beam will just snap in half Okay. This has to be long enough on both sides so that it can't slip out. And the distance that it has to be is that development length. And we had all those lectures on how to calculate development length. Remember that psi E, psi T. Uh, there was like, uh, there was this table with Fy squared F prime C and all, all that kind of stuff. Okay. All those lectures were just to calculate this number here to double check that you're not cutting the bars too short. Okay. Here's another way to look at this. Um, these are uh, the strengths uh, of, um, let me move myself out of the way. Um, these are the strengths of four bars. Let me, that's MN for all four bars. And this is the MN of just two bars. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> that's what it looks like. And oh, this little mark here. That little tick up means we've cut some of the bars. Okay? So out here, there's two bars. In the middle, there's four bars. And out here, there's two bars. 
Okay, so if you can't remember what that looked like, let me bring back the three-dimensional picture. Um, this. Okay, so see out on the outer edges of the beam, there are only two bars, but in the middle portion of the beam, there's four bars. Okay? And so it's it's hard to when you're looking when you're looking this way, it's hard to see that. Oops, let me. We center the screen capture. Okay. Okay, so this is hard. This view, when you're looking this way, okay, that's hard to see the bar cut off. And so, um, what we've done is in this drawing here, that little tick that, or that comes up, this is backwards, uh, I can't do it this way. Uh, so uh, the camera flips me, it, it's kind of weird. Okay, it's like a mirror. Anyway, that little tick that's coming up here, that indicates that some of the bars have been cut. And so in the middle, you have a higher strength and in the two ends, you have the lower strength. Now, what about development length? And remember how we talked about development is like a tug of war and that the first person is holding 50 pounds after two people it goes up to 100 pounds 150 200 250 etc the force on the rope is going up 50 pounds per person and we said similarly you could have something like that for the beam like 50 pounds per foot and what we're saying is that development length, so out here, this is the last person on the rope. Then there's another person and another person and another person. And so at first there's zero force before the first person. So this is actually the first person. That's the zero person behind that person. Okay. And then the second person and the third person, and it's linearly increasing per person. We're going to say the force goes from zero to Fy linearly over the development length. And what that means, if T is increasing linearly, um, it's not exactly right. Remember, we, we did the um, example in class where I doubled and tripled and quadrupled the amount of steel, but it was almost linear, right? And so uh, what we're going to say is this. Over the development length, you go from zero to the full strength because you calculated MN using T equals FY times AS. So you assume that the bars were yielded. We're going to say that at the start of the rebar, there's no strength and you gradually increase like 50, 100, 150, 200, just like that tug of war example. And as you increase the tension linearly, you're increasing MN linearly. And we're going to say it ramps up linearly from zero to there. Well, this is the strength of uh, two bars. And then we're adding in two more bars. And it's going to ramp up again up to the strength of four bars. And again, over the distance of LD. This is the capacity diagram taking into account development length. And this red line needs to be outside the moment diagram. And that's, um, it's going to affect where we cut the bars off. Okay. <clears throat> and so that's the concept of bar cutoff. Let me review. The, the, the main concept is that you don't need all the bars if the moment on the moment diagram decreases. And so there is going to be a spot where you can reduce some of the bars. Okay. And uh, it will look like this. Okay. So you can get rid of some of the bars where the moment's small. And the last thing we need to do with the development length, okay, um, <clears throat> uh, you have to have at least a development length. Um, from uh, where you want to cut the bars to where the moment's maximum. There are a little more details to this. 
and um, actually a lot more details to this and they're kind of hard to keep track of and so I've made a little mnemonic that will help us I call it help H-E-L-P and I'll introduce that in the next video